agenda item number 13, new business. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Ms. Milk, that's okay. Um, I just had a, another item under unfinished business that I oh, wanted to bring up. It's not on the agenda, but it's just something that I had been thinking about. And I think it goes under unfinished business. If it does not, please, okay. please let me know. Um, I have been giving a lot of thought to the meeting that we had on July 24th relative to um, search committees, hiring policies, posting of jobs, things like that. And I know at the last meeting we were able to um, vote on a new reconfiguration of the, uh, the middle high school of how the administrative structure will look at that school. So through you to the superintendent, I didn't know if you could perhaps enlighten the committee as well as perhaps the public on what process you use to fulfill not only positions at that school, but the positions of the people that were um, presented to us this evening? I think uh, typically, given time, uh, what we do is post a position, uh, any position that we have, uh, ex it was internally and externally uh, for a number of weeks, uh, usually anywhere from three to four weeks minimum of posting time. Uh, the uh, the process then would be to form, we, we do a, a process now in, in our human resources department where we actually create the profile of an idea of candidate and we, uh, we have a job description that's either brand new or updated. We do that as we do part of this process. Then we do a screening and we, we do interviews in round one and then an interview possibly at round two and possibly even round three depending on the level of position. Uh, Again, given time, we do that. Not given time, uh, with the importance of, of uh, getting things off to a, a, a start with, uh, with people in positions of importance, uh, we have streamlined that process significantly in a number of cases. Uh, we have gone back to people who interviewed for other positions or interviewed for a similar position but didn't get it, uh, but was my second candidate uh, in some cases, uh, we have uh, used a, 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 an internal procedure where administratively we discuss who the best candidate is and we sometimes make a decision that way. And in other situations, uh, I make the decision myself and ultimately all the administrators work for me and all the teachers work for the principals. Uh, so the principals go through a different process in their buildings, uh, but we do have a process in place that we would take, but time being what it is in some cases, uh, we have altered that process, uh, as is the, the prerogative of the superintendent uh, in hiring certain positions. So uh, I, I firmly believe that it's, it's, uh, we're always better off to have people to go through a process a thorough process of, of vetting and those kind of things, and we've done that in various ways. No candidate gets hired here without going through a vetting process. Uh, depending on what that process is, 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 is time uh, constraints make that different. Mr. Donovan. Um, in response to that, I, I just wanted to say that um, on, a personal, on a personal note, when I ran for this committee during my election, part of my my big thing was my ABCs, accountability, best practices, and communication. And I think in the way that some of these positions were filled were not necessarily the best practice. And I felt bad about that. Um, I also realized that it is the ultimate role of the superintendent to hire uh, building principals, that we play no role in the actual selection process. I do understand our role is solely to employ the superintendent and perhaps the special ed director. Again, but just getting back to the best practices, I feel that in some of those cases, the best practice was not done. However, there's nothing we can do about it. He has the ultimate authority to hire the way he hired. However, I would recommend now that the um, subcommittees have been established and I would really hope that the main thing that the policy subcommittee would look at is a hiring and a posting policy for the district. Ultimately, yes, the superintendent can choose who he wants, but I think as us as a school committee, as a governing board, it's our role to put how that process gets put into place to assure that the best practice is being used, that 
Everybody is being held accountable for their specific roles. Communication is taking place. So again, we, I, we control the how, and I would hope that it's something that the policy committee would look at to try to set guidelines, guardrails, so that in the future there is no question of how a certain job was filled. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Lazo. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's not news to, to anybody on how I feel about the process. And I do agree 100% with uh, Mrs. Donovan as far as process and procedure, especially on the accountability portion. Um, I know the process. I know Ed Reform. I know what the superintendent's duties are, and I know what the school committee's duties are. Um, I would just like to ask, what type of search did we perform for the high school principal? Was it an international search? Was it a local search? What, what, what type of search do we use? Is that a question for me? Uh, through the chair. To you, Mr. Mueller. First of all, we don't. We no longer have a high school principal position. We have a middle school, high, middle high school principal position, as was created by the school committee when we created the uh, the new configuration of the, of the administrators. And uh, leading up to that, basically, I did an internal search uh, with some people in my administration as part of that discussion. Uh, but ultimately, I made that decision myself after looking at our internal candidates and who I thought fit best in the positions that we had. I know that we do not appoint principals. But as a school committee member, when I took Mr. Lab's process, and Mr. Lab's um, job app, his qualifications, and then I took our middle high school qualifications, they were miles apart. And he is the principal of West Street. Um, I think it's, as a school committee member, poor judgment. I think it's a mismanagement, and I think that uh, I, I'm not going to change on that. But the thing is, the process, to, to the process, we've always had a process. We've, under uh, Dale Hanley, we've had processes the school committee has put forward that we would have a search committee where we would have a school committee member, parent, administrator, kind of a cross section. We know the superintendent has the ultimate uh, say on the position. But the process was always very firm and fair. And, and, and whether anybody liked whoever got appointed, you know, the majority usually went with uh, the appointment. And the appointments were pretty, pretty good. We haven't done real bad with that process. That's why I think a lot of the parents and, and uh, people in town are kind of cautiously uh, going into this, this project here now because they were told certain things ahead of time that are not going to happen now. Uh, that was why I didn't understand what the great rush was to go to one administrator. It's, it's not that, uh, you know, it is what it is. But I think what we have to do is the process has been flawed. I think it's a mismanagement uh, appointing uh, who has been appointed. I'm not going to do appointing, but I will hold the superintendent accountable under new business. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Principe? What I would like to say now is that there are administrators in place, and it behooves this school committee to support the administrators that were put in these positions and to support our superintendent for choosing these individuals. There is a process, and it's called accountability. And that comes further down the line. But right now, I don't believe it's the time to start out with, a, with negativity with a brand new middle, middle high school and a reconfiguration of the elementary schools to go into this with a negative attitude, and that is what I'm hearing. And I will say it again, it is time to support these individuals that were put into these positions. Thank you. Dr. O'Leary. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My comment would be uh, in response to Ms. Principe. Uh, my loyalty is, is to this district, not the administrators of this uh, district, it's to the, the, the district and the students. Uh, so if I have an issue with someone who's been appointed in a flawed, potentially flawed fashion, you will not find me supporting something that is, uh, that is, uh, goes against what is right for this district. Thank you. Mrs. McLaughlin, did you have something? Um, not related to this. Okay. Uh, I, though I do want to say that, um, I, I, I agree with Mr. Principe. Um, I think the success of the administrative team that's been put in place at that school will be a success for all of us. It will be a success for the students. Um, 
and I would like us to uh, support that administration going forward. Thank you. Mr. Lazo, did you have anything else? Um, it's nice that we can all get together and hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but I have a problem with the appointment. I do not think she's qualified. I, uh, as far as worrying about the kids and staff, I'm very worried about the kids and staff uh, on the organization and management portion of the school. Uh, I will continue to keep a close watch eye on it. I think we have to move forward. Of course, the district's going to move forward. The district was here long before the school committee and superintendent. So I think we're going to move forward. But uh, don't put your head in the sand and say, let's just go forward and forget about everything now. I'm one that remembers everything. Your greatest teacher is your history and your mistakes. Don't forget it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Mrs. Quinney? Um, I Point of order. The public is allowed to speak at any time during our meetings. There is a statement with that in there. So she can speak at this time. Mrs. Quinney, just announce your point name. Point of order, Mrs. Erin Quinney. Wait, excuse me, Street? Mrs. Quinney. What is South the point of order, sir? Point, excuse me? What is the point of order, Mr. That's Lincoln? what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to say, state your point of order. Madam Chairman, for the last 25 years, we've moved in and out of citizens input. We are a policy making body. We are meeting in public, not a public meeting. We already researched this with the attorney. That's why we moved citizens forum or citizens input, they call it, public input before we start our policy meeting. And that is state law. And this was told to us by our own attorneys. So if you as the chairman want to is this a ventriloquist show? I did the lips not moving, say the dummy speaks? Excuse me, Mr. Lazo, please. You're going to do whatever you want it. anyway, so continue to do whatever you want. You want to violate the law, it's your business. I just wanted to enlighten you on it. Thank I, you. I Thank you. I know what Robert's that. rules allows. Mrs. Quinney. Thank you. Um, I also would like to state that history is our great teacher, so let us look back. We have a policy manual in place for the school committee that was. The last adoption was in May of 2009, at which point there was no hiring policy in place for the superintendent to follow. Fast forward to 2010 when there was a search committee established by the school committee for the superintendent's position, which was then disbanded at the discretion of the school committee, who then performed their own search. and found and appointed Mr. Ely as the candidate who sits before us now as our superintendent. At that time, when he was the man for the job, there was no policy manual in place to guide his hiring practices. There was no issue with it up until recently. If he, you felt comfortable with his ability to choose and hire administrators within the district at that time, now we move forward to today. He has done the job that you've hired him to do. He has put in place an administrative team to lead a middle high school. I myself am not thrilled that there wasn't a process. However, as a member of this community, I wish and hope for nothing but success for Ms. Carroll and her team. And to sit here and to listen to and to read in the newspaper members of the school committee demeaning and undermining her authority as a leader in this district is absolutely and positively repugnant to me. In the vision statement for the Southbridge Public Schools, it says that we are developing personal integrity. It would be really nice to see the members of the school committee hold themselves to a standard of personal integrity that we expect the students of this community to follow, not to display themselves in a manner in which we say, this is what not to do, this is how not to behave. This is a woman who has been placed in a position of authority with strong people around her. You cannot like it, you cannot like the process, but her success is the success of this district, the success of the kids in that school, and the success of our community. If you wish nothing but to watch her do something wrong and to fail, you are hoping for the failure of this district and those students, and to me, I, I can't even fathom that thought. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Quinney. Mr. Lazo. 
Yeah, that's funny. That statement didn't uh, suit when Bill Bishop was the principal. That's uh, almost double standard. But uh, what Miss Quinney's got to learn is that there is no policy for the superintendent because the superintendent is under the jurisdiction of ed reform. We have nothing to do with appointments. Mm -hmm. I think that Ms. Donovan has, and Ms. McLaughlin has brought it up numerous times, and Ms. Quinney hasn't got it yet. I think you have to tell her a few more times that we have no say in appointments. Now, if the superintendent wants to appoint somebody that's been an administrator for three to five months in the Southland school system, and you're all happy about that, as a citizen, I'm very happy for you. But as a school committee member, I don't want my kids, and when I say kids, I don't mean mine personally, I mean the district. I'm not, I have no, not me, me. So I think what we really have to do is, I'm very worried about making our kids and our staff guinea pigs in a trial and error of one administrator. So I disagree. That's not a violation of the Ethics Commission. I, I, I answer to the State Ethics Commission. I've already talked. Miss Quinney's a little out of touch with what she's saying. She gets up and she talks, but she's out of Thank touch. You. She doesn't understand the law, nor does she ever understand what we're supposed to be doing up here. We do have a right to disagree. We don't have to hate each other. Mm -hmm. We do the politics. You vote, you yeah. vote. If you have four votes, you win. Very simple. Thank you. Thank She'll you. She'll get it someday. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Mr. Ely? Well, I avoid reading newspapers, no offense, Gus, but I have read a couple things. Uh, and I've, I've read a number of things that have been sent to me. And, uh, uh, you know, I, as, as a friend of mine says, it, it's hard to hurt my feelings. I don't have any left. Uh, and I am held responsible for the learning of every child in this district. I'm also held responsible for the success of every administrator in this district. Part of my job is to develop people. Uh, we spent the last two days and we spent the next, we spend the next two days working with our administrators to give them uh, some knowledge and some skills and some training that, that uh, they haven't had yet, uh, things that are new. Uh, we do it every year. Uh, I, on a, on a uh, regular basis, meet with all administrators uh, and we, and we, uh, and some take to it better than others. I, I will admit that. Uh, some take to it better than others. Uh, but my job is to develop people and develop administrators. Uh, I would never put anybody in charge of students in a classroom, on a bus, uh, in a building, or in a district that I wouldn't put my own kids or my own grandkids uh, under their responsibility. I have 100% faith in, the, in Mrs. Peralt, Ms. Peralt and her team. Uh, and I do believe it's a team, it takes a team effort to run a building that size. Uh, you know, whether people all agree or disagree, uh, I don't, only time will tell. Uh, I don't believe it's an experiment. I believe it's uh, faith. In, in somebody's ability that I've seen and that I've, and I, that I've assessed and that I've studied. And uh, I think it was very important to put a team around any new principal, just the way I'm putting a team around Mr. Lab at West Street, uh, just a different kind of team. Uh, but this is about people. This is a people business. And when, when you put somebody in charge of something, uh, I'm not going to go second guessing what they do. If I have a problem with Mrs. Peralt, I'm going to go talk to Ms. Peralt. I'm not going to talk in the newspaper, Gus, sorry. I'm not going to talk to Mr. Abramson, even though I like Mr. Abramson. I'm not going to talk to him on his blog. It's not what it's about. It's about me working with Ms. Peralt in her building to make things go right for those kids and for your kids, for our kids. Uh, they, uh, uh, they deserve the best, and, and I believe that's what we put in front of them. And I think that, uh, I think we'd be really careful about wondering whether it's going to succeed. It's absolutely going to succeed because I haven't given it any other option. It has to succeed. Uh, and I gotta be honest with you, everybody that I've sent up there to take a tour of that building so far, and everybody that's come back to me after they've taken a tour of that building and had an opportunity to work in, with that team and see them work together and operate already, has come back very, very impressed. I would encourage the public to take advantage of the tours that are ongoing over the next few days to see the excitement in the teachers' faces. You talk about the teachers, the teachers are overly excited about that building. The kids who are coming into the building, the parents who are coming into the building, every teacher in that building that I've talked to is excited. 
Some of the teachers yesterday, we had a large number of people come in to do the tours, teachers volunteering to take people on tours, teachers who have been in the building and are going to be leaders in the building. Uh, it's a time to develop a new culture in Southbridge, and it's a culture of success and expectations for all students and all adults, including ourselves. I hold my, myself to high standards, and I know you hold me to high standards, and I appreciate that, Mr. Lazo, and, and everybody setting up here. I do, and I hold you to high standards as well, uh, because we are all here for the 2,204 kids at last count that we have in our, under our care. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that it's successful for those kids. Uh, the drama, you know, it, it'll, it'll come and go uh, with both the kids and the adults. Uh, but the one thing that's consistent is it has to be the expectations for excellence that we have for everybody in our system, from the kids up through the adults. Thank you. Thank you. Any other unfinished business before we go on to new business? Madam Chairman? Yes, just Mr. Lazo. Let's not make it sound like all of a sudden we just started with excellence yesterday. Excellence has been on the move for the last seven years through a lot of different people, a lot of optimism. There still is a lot of optimism. Don't, don't misunderstand when we disagree that we're against everything. There's no bigger cheerleader for that building in Southbridge than myself. Okay? There are a few people that got involved lately, and, and, and it's fine. I mean, it's time for changes sometimes, and sometimes it's not. And, and the people control that end of it. I understand government, politics, and management. I'm very disheartened and rush to arms to do this 30 days before we open school. And the only thing I'm saying is, is that from here on out, I mean, I've, I've got many problems in the district that we work on. And I, I'm optimistic that it will always survive and it'll be fine. But the thing is, when I, when I disagree and I think something's being mismanaged, I go the whole route because that's the way I am. Don't have to like it. You can me out in June, whatever you want to do. I'm sure Ms. Quinney will enjoy that. But that's what I'm Thank saying. Thank you, you Mr. Lazo. Anyone else for unfinished business? Mrs. Donovan. Thank you. I just have one last comment, and I feel I'm the one that got this snowball rolling. But um, I just want everybody to know, Mr. Ely, everybody sitting up here, people out in the public, there's nothing more that I want than the success of that new school, success of the children, success of all those new administrators, success of this board, and success for Mr. Ely. The last thing I wanted to do was pronounce something as, neg as a negative um, thing. I care so deeply. That's why I'm here. That's why we're all here. I fully support Mr. Ely's decision. I fully support Ms. Perot. I fully support all those administrators that were there today. They deserve that, and that's the least that we can do, and I stand behind every single one of them. This is a huge deal for our town. We've been waiting for so long to express and enjoy the excitement and the positivity that this new facility will bring to our town and to our kids. So my only issue was perhaps Mr. Han Ms. Dr. Hanley had a way of hiring in the past. There is nothing in our school committee policy manual that sets a course for hiring school principals. That is my point, to avoid any innuendo or rumor or whatever the case may be in future years to come if there's a policy in place for a superintendent to follow the how to go about finding a principal, that was my main point. But I am so excited, thrilled to pieces about what's about to happen in our town. And if I gave the wrong impression, I wholeheartedly apologize because you're not going to find a bigger cheerleader than me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for 